Okay, uh, welcome to lecture 10. Let us continue uh, with uh, what we have been doing uh, in this week. Uh, we have been discussing uh, analysis of statically determinate trust. Uh, uh, we learnt uh, an analysis of statically determinate trust means for this week we are only uh, focusing determination of internal forces, the member forces in the trust. Uh, we have already um, we discussed uh, one method, uh, method of joints. And I believe that by now you are you are comfortable with method of joints. What we will be doing today mm. and uh, next class uh, we will discuss another method called uh, method of sections. Okay. So, uh, today's topic is today we will start analysis of statically determinate trusses using method of sections. If you uh, if you recall uh, that was our uh, in the last last lecture we stopped at this problem. And um, we said uh, that um, the demonstration of method of section, the first demonstration of the method of section will be done uh, through this problem. But let us, before we do that, let us try to understand what method of section is. You know, what method of joint is uh, in a truss, we have members, joints, and support. Method of joints is you take every joints, whatever required joints separately, draw the free body diagram of those joints then apply equilibrium conditions on those free body diagram and then get a system of equations and find out and solve those equations to get the unknowns uh, the member forces. Now, method of section is let us uh, let us consider a truss. Uh, now, met in method of joints we, 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 we can take these joints and draw the free body diagram of these joints right. Now, method of section is take one section in this trucks let us say section 1 1 and break this truss at this section. So, if you break this truss at this section you have two part of the truss one part is this and another part is this. Now, if you break it and you take and, and this part is separated from this part. So, this part is separated from this part. Okay. Now, draw the free body diagram of both the parts. If we draw the free body diagram, then free body diagram will be this. Okay. It was uh, hinge support. So, it is represented by two, um, um, uh, two forces uh, horizontal and um, vertical reactions and the roller support here one only one reaction at E. Uh, now, uh, this section breaks member H i, member C i and member C d. Right? Now, Therefore, uh, an F H I, F C I, F C D, they are the forces in those members. Uh, now, if you draw the, if we break it, and then that uh, that section is to be represented by the member forces that we discussed while um, um, when we discussed about free body drawing, free body diagrams. Now, uh, as per our sign convention, tension is positive, so. Uh, tension tension means in, in the member it will be in the this, this direction right now uh, so the member forces in hi is this member forces in ci is this and member forces in cd is this and same uh, other parts uh, in the other parts of the truss the these forces are this now if you join them together what will happen is this this and this force these they are or they are equal and opposite they will balance each other this and these they are equal and opposite balance each other and similarly these and these they are equal and opposite they will balance each other. Then uh, the section will be in equilibrium right there will be no net internal forces at that section. So, it is uh, it is consistent with the equilibrium uh, condition this free body diagram. Now, next step is to draw the free body diagram uh, draw next step is to apply the equilibrium condition on this section. So, this is the free body diagram of section 1 1. Okay. What we what we will do today is we will demonstrate this method. This method is called method of section and we will demonstrate this method through some examples. Now, let us start with this example. Um, this was the last example in this was the example we took in the last class. We need to determine uh, the forces in this member member C D. We need to find out more forces in this member. Okay. Now, uh, just to appreciate appreciate the method of section in a better way, let us uh, let us 
let us analyze these the same structure using both method, method of joints as well as method of section. Let us start with method of joints and then see what are the steps need to be performed in method of joints and uh, vis a vis if we apply method of sections then what are the steps required. Okay. The first step is irrespective of whether you use method of joints and uh, section let us find out the um, uh, let us first uh, try to inspect the truss visually before we before we actually go for analysis and find out if we have some information about the structure if we can slightly uh, um, simplify it. Simplify means for instance in this case uh, just by visual inspection we can say that member F D uh, is a zero force member. Okay. Why member F D is a zero force member? Same concept if you remember. Uh, if you remember last class we discussed suppose if we if we draw the free body diagram of uh, free body diagram of member uh, a free body diagram of uh, joints joint f then the free body diagram will be something like this uh, this is the mm, this is f this is f and then on this this is fd f fd and this is FFC, FC, and uh, <coughs> this one is FA. This one is F, FA. Now, this is the free body diagram. This is the free body diagram of joint F. Now. <coughs> this force FC and FA, they are their line of action is same. <coughs> but FD has a different line of action. The FD has one one component normal to this line of action and another component along this line of action. Now there is no other forces which can balance the normal component, uh, the component of FD, uh, normal to this line of action. So the normal component has to be zero. If the normal component is zero, naturally the force in FD is equal to zero. So you we do not need this step uh, as I said uh, uh, earlier also we do not need this step this step needs to be performed in your mind uh, just by looking at the truss uh, we should be able to say what are the zero force members. Okay. So, in this case member FD is a zero force member. Okay. Now, first let us determine the support reactions draw the free body diagram of the entire structure. Uh, Again, this is hinge support and this is roller support. They are represented by their reactions. Um, it is an equilateral triangle. This angle is 60 degree and the side is L. So, first take uh, uh, support reactions. First take summation of Fx is equal to 0. Uh, summation of Fx means forces we have in x direction is Ax and P. Uh, they both are <coughs> positive. Uh, you see, this is our sign convention when you do the algebraic uh, operation. So, it gives you Ax plus P is equal to 0 and which gives you eventually Ax is equal to minus P. So, this is uh, horizontal reaction and support A. Now, <coughs> let us take moment about A. If we take moment about A, then only forces which will contribute to the moment is uh, this and this force. Uh, the moment about A, moment about this moment of this force about A will be clockwise and moment of BY about, uh, 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 about this point will be anti clockwise. So, uh, the, this will be positive and this will be negative the as per our sign convention. Now, what will be the uh, what will be what will be the moment of P? Moment of P will be P into this distance P into this distance this distance this distance is L by 2 um, cos 60 degree and then into P and then this distance is L. So, B into L is equal to 0 and eventually you will get B y is equal to um, this. Once we have B y is equal to this next is take summation of forces in y direction summation of force in y direction is 0 y direction forces we have only a y and b y they both are uh, vertically upward as per our sign convention this is positive. So, this is positive and uh, b y you already determined here. So, a i uh, a i will be um, this. So, these are our uh, these are the uh, um, uh, these are all um, support condition right these are all uh, support reaction these are all support reaction this is support reaction and this is support reactions. So, we have determined uh, support reactions. Now, irrespective of method of sections and joint to use if you have to um, if you have to um, uh, determine the support reaction. So, similar con similar uh, approach you may, you may, may be followed. Okay. Now, 
once the support reaction is uh, determined, uh, then let us uh, move on. Um, these are the support reactions just now determined. Now, first let us take we need to determine member force in C D. It is therefore, um, uh, what we can do is the first one approach is see in order to get the member force is C D, we need to draw the free body diagram of C, right. Now, Free, uh, free body diagram of joint C. Now, at joint C, how many members we have? We have three members. So, uh, as we discussed, you, when we choose a joint, you you have only two equations per joint, right? When you choose a joint, uh, then make sure that uh, at this joint you have only two unknowns. Even if you choose a joint which has three unknowns, that is also possible. But in that case, you cannot just from that particular joint you cannot uh, get the uh, get the all the unknowns you need to get the information from other joints as well now in this case joint c has three unknown uh, three members so uh, at least one member uh, one member force should be known to in order to determine uh, member force in cd by uh, free body diagram of joint c and that could be that member could be this member could be this member now if if we need to determine this member, then free body diagram of joint E will give us this member. But again, free body diagram at, at joint E, we have three members, right. In order to get the force in this member, at least one of uh, one member force, either member ED or member EB should be known. Then only we can uh, use free body diagram of joint E to determine member force in EC. Now, in order to get this uh, member force, we need to take the member free body diagram of joint B. So, if we go in this way, in order to get the free body diagram, in order to get the member force in CD, we need to determine, we need to get the, um, we need to take, we need to consider the uh, joint uh, free body diagram of joint B first, get member force here, get, uh, get member force, get in this member and then once this is known at joint D, at joint E only unknown are the only unknowns are these and these member forces get the free body diagram of joint E and calculate this member force and then once this is known take joint C where only unknowns are these and this calculate um, member force in C D. So, this is one way we can go. Another, another way is you um, take joint a calculate member force uh, here uh, member a, a f then take joint f joint f though it has three members um, it is zero force member so essentially uh, this member you don't need to consider it you don't contribute anything to the equilibrium uh, equilibrium uh, at joint f so once we know the member force in af by taking joint f we can get the member force in fc and then once this is done then take joint c to get the member force in fd so this is another approach another way now uh, you will realize that if we if we if we follow the second path uh, then our computation will be easier as the member this member is zero force member now let's first consider joint a so this is the free body diagram of joint a um, support two support reactions member force ad uh, fad and member force in af uh, af and this angle is 60 degree then apply summation of uh, summation of forces in y direction is equal to 0 summation of forces y direction what are the forces we have in y a y and then vertical component of f a f vertical component of this vertical component of uh, uh, this force now so a y which is upward vertical as per our sign convention positive and then a f sin 60 degree again it is upward. So, it is uh, positive a y already we have determined uh, support reaction is already determined. So, if we substitute that. So, what we get is um, uh, a, a member force in a f is equal to this ok. Now, so this member force is known now ok. If you if you if we want to determine member force in AD, then we can take summation of um, again summation of f x is equal to zero, summation of f x is equal to zero, 
and determine the member force in AD. But since that is not uh, required right now, because the problem was uh, what what was asked is the member force only in CD. And in order to get the member force in CD, and if you go in this way, we don't need member force in AD. So let us not do this uh, here. So we know the member force in AF is equal to this, right? Now next. Um, take the joint free body diagram of joint F. If we draw the free body diagram of joint F, then uh, this is member force F, this is member force, member force in F C and uh, their line of action is same. Now um, since F D is a 0 force member, uh, so F F D is equal to 0 that is why it is not shown here. Now, uh, you see it is from this free body diagram it is obvious that uh, since their line of actions are same in order to maintain the equilibrium these two forces um, needs to be same right they needs to at this joint then these two forces needs to be same and um, in opposite direction so uh, directly um, without um, writing summation of fx is equal to 0 summation of f y is equal to 0 we can say that this force and this force uh, they are uh, they are same and since we have already determined the member force in af so member force in fc is equal to p by 2 now in such situation you really don't need to as this is as we are um, we have just started learning method of sections and method of joints uh, and I am writing all this free body diagram explicitly all the joints. But you know when you really actually um, solve a problem just again uh, by inspection you can see that member force in this member um, uh, force in this member and the force in this member uh, will be uh, same. Okay? So, you do not need this step directly you can write this expression. Now, so this is this is now known and this is now known then last is take free body diagram of joint C. If you take free body diagram of joint C then uh, it becomes um, it has three members C F or F C, C D and C E uh, they are all inclined at 30 degree angle uh, this is 30 degree this is 30 degree and F C is the member force in C F and C D is a member force in C D and C is a member force in C E. Now, <coughs> we have already determined this, this member force is already known. So, this is known. So, at member at joint C only unknown are uh, this and this two unknown. We have two equations we can determine these two unknown. So, let us um, let us write the equilibrium equation. Uh, first equilibrium equation is f x is equal to 0. Now, uh, what are the components uh, ha we have in x direction? The, um, uh, the component of f c, component of f, component of c e, uh, component of f c d there will be no component because it is in y direction. So, if we write this then now f component of f c is in this direction component of f c is in this direction and as per our sign convention this is positive and then component of um, f uh, component of c is in this direction component of f c is again in th is this direction and as per our sign convention this is negative. Now, so uh, finally from this equation we get, we get that f c is equal to f c f c is equal to p by 2. Again you know this to get this uh, this information uh, explicitly free body uh, writing this equilibrium equation may not be necessary because this is a symmetric uh, this this free body diagram is symmetric where only horizontal component you have the component from this and component from this and both these members are inclined at same angle. So, naturally the member forces in this and member forces in this they have to be same to maintain the equilibrium okay, that we can say uh, just by looking at the free body diagram. Now, next is um, once we know this next we take the uh, next equilibrium equation summation of forces in y direction is equal to 0. Now, again vertical component of this vertical component of this and then uh, member for C D itself. So, uh, they all are in uh, vertically downward direction again as per our sign convention these are all forces are negative forces. So, F C D then and then F C E its com uh, component um, vertical component and then F C is vertical component we already know F C F C is equal to p by 2 and if we substitute that we get F C D is equal to uh, minus p root 3 by 2. So, this is the uh, final um, this is the member force in member uh, in, in, in in C D. As, as you remember we mentioned 
two way you can represent the member forces one mem one way is f c d is equal to with sign the member force is represented with sign positive is tension negative is compression and otherwise you mm, otherwise only the magnitude of the force uh, uh, can uh, you write the magnitude of the force and in bracket write whether it is compression or tension now uh if you follow if you if you follow this representation then please make sure that throughout your analysis negative stands for compression and positive stands for tension don't mix up sign convention in different free body diagram and if you stick to sign convention then uh, this uh, this uh, expression carries some meaning otherwise you need to write um, uh, uh, you need to represent the force and member forces like this but i always i always suggest you use a sign convention uh, and uh, stick to that sign convention uh, throughout your uh, throughout your analysis it's not necessary that you use the sign convention that we are using here you can use any sign any sign convention but whatever sign convention you use that needs to be uh, you need to be uh, consistent with the sign convention okay now you see in method of joints then what we have done is we if we need to find out the force in member cd then we have to go either this way or this way we need to we had to consider several joints free body diagram of several joints and apply equilibrium conditions and finally to reach cd and get finally to reach c um, and from c free body diagram of c we could um, calculate the member force in cd and now uh, let's see if we using method of section how things become mm, uh, very easy at least for this problem now mm, but this remains same your this is the, uh, the the first step uh, visual inspection uh, that this is a zero force member and then mm, uh, and then uh, support reactions by calculating the uh, by cal by considering the free body diagram of the entire structure and this step remains same whether section the method of section or method of joints now let's take one section here section 1 1 okay and then um, section 1 1 then breaks this uh, this entire structure into two part one is this part one is on this side of the part and another is this side of the part this side of the section okay now let us consider this side of the section this this part and draw the free body diagram of this part okay now um, take this is this part and uh, um, just taken is 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 separated from the entire uh, structure. Okay, now these are the so this section uh, the this section cuts member CE, member CD, and member AD. So and and member FD um, and member FD. So naturally, so these there will be the member forces that needs to be uh, that needs to be shown in this free body diagram. And what are the member forces? The first is in member. I, I, this is member AD. So member force in. Mm, um, so this will be member force in AD. So um, again, uh, tension is positive when you are when you are uh, writing in a member. So this direction is positive. Mm, and this is this 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 represent it is under tension. Similarly, write member force in uh, mm. FD though FD is zero just for the demonstration so that things become clear. I'm writing it explicitly here. So if this is the member force in the FD, then this section intersects member CD as well. So this is member CD and uh, this is the free this is the forces uh, force in member cd and it intersects member c and this is member c this is a part of member c and this is force in ce so this is the free body diagram of section 1 1 okay now what we do is we'll apply uh, equilibrium equation on this free body diagram and 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 find out um, the force in member cd Okay, now what are the equilibrium? What are the equilibrium conditions we have? You see, uh, remember when we talk about uh, method of joints, we say that at every joint we have two equilibrium equations. One is summation of, of mm, and those two equilibrium equations were summation of forces uh, mm, in two coordinate directions are zero, right? And we also say that. Uh, 
summation of moment about that point will not give you any information because if you are considering free body diagram of a joint where all the forces are passing through mm, the same joint. So, if you take moment at that joint moment about that point then all the, the contribution of all the forces will be 0. So, summation of moment at that point or about that point is anyway 0. So, it do not give you any additional information right. Now, uh, but if we take method of section here ok. Now, what are the equilibrium conditions we have in method of sections? We have we all the equilibrium conditions can be uh, can be used here summation of forces in x direction is equal to 0. Because if you say uh, summation of f summation of force x direction is equal to 0. So, we have summation of force in x direction is equal to 0 in this case, then we also have summation of f y is equal to 0. So, these two equilibrium equations are anyway um, uh, we can use. Now, suppose in this case if I take moment about about joint D, this force will not contribute, this force will not contribute, this force will not contribute because they these two forces they are um, the, the line of action passing through point uh, point D joint D, but this force and this force will contribute um, will contribute and this force will contribute. Similarly, if I take say um, free body diagram of from free body diagram at uh, moment at that point moment this is E ok moment ab moment at E. Then what happened this force will not contribute this force will not contribute, but these these and these these three forces will contribute because they are not um, uh, passing through these points ok. So, here see summation of moment summation of moment about any axis that 0. So, all these three uh, equilibrium equations you can use. Now, let us do that here mm, ok. So, mm, this is the free body diagram. Now, we need to determine the force in member C D force in member C D right this member. Now, let us take free body diagram uh, about B. If we take free body diagram about B, then what are the forces contribute? Uh, what are the forces will contribute? So, this force will not contribute because it is passing the line of action passing through B. This force will not contribute because its line of action passing through B and again this force will again not contribute because its line of action passing through B. So, only forces will contribute are uh, this force P, this F D and this C D. Now, in this if d is anyway 0. So, only forces will contribute is the external load p and member force C d. Now, let us take um, m b is equal to 0. If we write m b is equal to 0, then what happened? Uh, this distance is L by 2. So, F C d into L by 2, which is again clockwise direction that is why it is positive and then p into this distance, this distance is L by 2 sin 60 degree and again this is clockwise positive. So, this is the uh, summation of moment about b or at b and then it gives you C d is equal to this. So, this is the member force you can write uh, this way as well. So, now what we understand what we um, uh, what is the take from this example. Now, when we have when we use method of joints then there are several joints need to be con needed to be considered then free body diagram and then apply the equilibrium equations. But for the same problem if we apply if we use section if we use um, method of sections it is just one section uh, will give you uh, um, the required member force right. So, at least with this problem your method of section gives you the result in a much faster way. Now, uh, but it may not be always possible. Uh, ideally, we will see uh, in some examples in ideal case what we do is in a same problem we use both combination of method of joints and method of sections ok. That probably is the best way to um, solve any trust problem if you uh, if you have to use uh, this kind of approach ok. Now, quickly uh, there are a few things um, uh, to be uh, uh, is very important that is see what choice of section is very important what section you choose there is no specification there is no guideline for that but that you need to understand based on your experience and as you as you solve many problems probably will understand um, in a better way but the best thing is whenever you solve a problem don't don't 
don't solve it mechanically after solving the problem just before you start solving a problem first intuitively you try to understand what are the forces what could be the forces what are the compression member tension member right somewhere and then uh, solve the problem and get the compression and tension member and then check whether your intuition is correct or not with through this exercise you need to build that 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 capability uh, through which just by looking at the um, looking at the truss looking at a problem you can you can identify you can um, you can plan uh, the approach of um, the solution approach for um, approach towards the solution okay for instance now uh, one but few things that you it is imp you you you, you uh, keep in mind well uh, one important thing while um, ch while choosing a section suppose section it's not always a section has to be a, a has to be a line section could be a curved section as well now but what is important is you see the same problem suppose this is the section right now if i take the this part of this this part of this uh, this part of this truss and draw the free body diagram of this then the free body diagram will be this this is the free body diagram right uh, this is the free body diagram this is the okay this is the free body diagram right now what happens now this force this this member is cd this section is chose this section is chosen in such a way it it cuts member cd two times at uh, 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 the first time here and the second time here so this is this part this part and this part is this part so naturally if you have to draw the free body diagram you have to show the forces in this part and forces in this part as well now you see this will not contribute anything explicitly this this is not going to give you any explicit information irrespective of your point irrespective of your point where you take the moment irrespective of your summation of fx is equal to 0 summation of fy is equal to 0 these two forces will always balance each other okay so whatever equilibrium equation you write about whatever point you take moment these two equations will balance each other right so these two equation will not give any information any new information these two forces will not give you any new information about the about the structure okay so uh, but why it is because this section cuts member cd two times so if you cut members cut a member two times means it is same as not cutting the member at all so this section this section and so therefore um, therefore this section and these sections are equivalent okay because if you this section only difference between this section and this section is this section inter uh, cuts member c member ed and member db this also cuts c ed and db this additionally it cuts member cd two times which is as good as not cutting member cd at all so these mem two sections are similar so it is just one demonstration how you choose a section but again um, um, no amount of theoretical demonstration is um, uh, can compensate um, uh, the effort you put uh, in actually uh, determining the or solving the truss problem. So, better thing uh, as you as you solve as you as solve more examples, probably that sense will automatically uh, get generated. Um, um, now, we'll stop here. Next class, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll give some uh, more example of um, of analysis of truss using method of sections. Thank you.